Welcome back, everyone, to the next installment of Salt and Sanctuary. I'm back here, from the Villager Smiles, with the person who can forgive my sin. 4,000, I don't really like that, but alright. Yay. That's it. I have no sin. None. Glow brightly. Okay, I will. I'm leaving now. Let's see. Do I have a particular... Maybe not. I guess I'll just go to the ziggurat. It's my most recent place anyway. It looks like I got the heavy roll. But whatever. I did a little bit of grinding, as you can see. I did not spend my salt to level up. I'm going to try something interesting. Now I'm officially with this creed again. Let us make an offering. I am going to produce an alchemist. And I'm going to do something pretty crazy. Shall we mold metal? Alchemy was a dead art, but this island somehow breathes new life into it. I can transform things, but only with the right alchemical ingredients. Well, we'll get on that. Transmute. I'm going to make a scary decision, and I am going to... Why can't they transmute this stuff? Because Oh, just it probably can. I just can't equip it. I'm going to transmute my greatsword that I've been loving this entire time. Before I do, let me just check something. Just to be safe. Because I've upgraded my swords, obviously, but I forgot if that counts for great swords. Wield class two swords, sure. Yeah, one hand class two great swords, I'm good. Okay. Watch this. I'm gonna transmute my Kuremoa four. What am I going to turn it into? I can use the Sodden Knight's Ashes to turn it into a Shrouded Bulwark 3. No, let me... There we go. So what do I... How do I choose? There we go. I can make a Jaws of Death 3, a Class 2 freaking Great Scissor from the Wrathful Dead's Bindings, which I hear is actually a very, very good weapon. And the attack is pretty crazy, and the strength scaling is lower, though. Black Widow 3. This is what I was going to do, a Chitin Obelisk. The problem is, though, the strength scaling goes way down, but the raw attack goes way up. I might actually want to buy another one of these great swords because it is possible to do that, depending on the right creed that you've joined, and maybe go for a different direction. But for now, I'm going to go with the Chitin Obelisk. And it already would go to level 3, because I've guessed... This is a class 4 sword, so they're going to let me have a little bit. So let's try that. Chitin Obelisk. Now... You know what else I'm going to do? I'm going to get... A merchant and a blacksmith. For the merchant, no, you are a smith. I'm a genius. For the merchant, let me see if I have this right. I'm not sure if the merchant sells me this. Oh, I ended up here when a merchant ship I was on wrecked somewhere in the Imran Sea. Do you have the sword? I guess maybe the blacksmith would? Dragon's Tooth. That's some throwing item. Yeah, maybe the merchant was a bad idea. I could try the blacksmith. Do you sell the super great sword, or do I actually have to... Mm. I might need to upgrade this with leader in order to get another great sword. I guess in the meantime, I'll work with what I have. Let us upgrade the obelisk. I require hateful jawbones. Well, goody, I have those.
I'd like to upgrade it again. Enduring Skull. I actually had to grind for one more of these, because this guy needs three. He needs one and two. So here's the two. And this is why I didn't level up, by the way. This is expensive. And for the coup de gras, the chitin, no, a twisted heart, which I don't have. I'm gonna have to get later, but in the meantime, even though my scaling has been downgraded, oh my god, my attack is gonna be just stupid. What is my attack anyway? Yeah, 50? Are you freaking kidding me? The weight's 20, though. That's the unfortunate part. But then again, I wonder how that compared to the original. It is heavier. It is heavier. But let's look at the description. This curious weapon began its life as the heavily modified hunting appendage of an armor mite, a gargantuan species of predatory arthropod found in subterranean environments. Composed entirely of a calciferous onyx chitin, its hardness and resilience rival those of the blades forged by master swordsmiths. And you know what? Oh, oh, there's the maximum amount of villagers? Oh, that's a pain. But... I can still travel to... Yeah, it's maxed the number of villagers. I didn't realize that was a thing. Alright, fine. I'll go to the Fort Beyond the Mire just because it's the same... something. I will put another guide here and a leader. And the damn merchant, what do I care? I'm actually running low on these things, but the good news is you can grind for merchants. So, where's the leader? You. Are you a true mountain smith? You, me, we'll crush anything in our path. You'll show me how. Work. I can level it up twice anyway. Why would I go for a hearty roll? Just give me an extra or what? Blue crystal, restore fatigue. Well, I don't care. Metal shock stone, lightning damage, mountain warhorn. Rapidly regain stamina. There's nothing really good here. A carved warhorn. Its sound can be heard in lands where only spirits dwell, where ghosts of ancient warriors patiently listen. They cannot directly affect the world of the living, but they can still inspire, sending across realms the same ferocity they once carried into battle. There's nothing really interesting here. I don't know, the warhorn? Whatever. And then I'll do uh, the primitive bones as rib. Another, do I get more rolls this way? Anyway, that leveled me a little bit. Yeah, that did actually pump my max number of hardy rolls. That's cool. Now, do you... Yeah, I can buy another one now. 1,500. I'm actually going to buy again. A steel centipede? What? An elaborate ceremonial sword composed of multiple segments with hollow cores held together from within by a loose steel chain. The interlocking segments can be released by a trigger in the hilt to form a bladed whip providing a dramatic increase in range. Named for its resemblance to a venomous arthropod feared throughout the western continents as an omen of death, this weapon was first employed in Tristan during Duke Karstjaw's political purges for the public execution of convicted witches by flogging. Jeez. Well, this does bode well, though. Now, want to go somewhere? Let's go right back to the ziggurat. Now that I have more great swords, I feel a little less afraid to lose them, right? Oh, I, I meant to buy two and I have three, but that's not really a big deal. So if I talk to the alchemist, I can transmute my incredibly powerful great sword into Jaws of Death, which I hear is like, like an endgame level sword. It's going to cost some fierce to upgrade it, but I'll do what I can, and I'll see what I like better. 
upgrade Jaws of Death if I can. <laughs> That's my weakness. The lock of hair. Really? Does the merchant even have those? How embarrassing. But you know what? It's up for grabs. It's up for grabs. I can do it. Let's take a look at the Jaws of Death, which is apparently also like a stupid weapon. And it's got better strength scaling. This peculiar weapon represents the culmination of an Ascarian inventor's pioneering efforts in the emerging industry of military scrap recycling. Constructed by joining two modified greatsword blades at a central pivot to form a double lever, it is capable of standard slashes and thrusts, as well as a devastating two-handed shear. As terrifying as it is innovative, the aptly christened Jaws of Death has achieved remarkable success in preliminary field tests, leading to its approval for wider deployment among Ascarian forces in the near future. Triangle while wielding for shearing. Yeah, from what I hear, the two-handed attack is really slow, but it's stupid damage. This swings at the same rate, and it fights the same way. That downward slash is kind of like the Armor Might's own attack. And then there's the Jaws of Death. Okay. And if I two-handed? Oh. How do I two-hand the thing? Or do I have to do this? There it is. Oh god. Yeah, it takes a little long to execute, but when you do... So I guess I need the shield off for that to make it worth it. And if I do the... Ugh, I gotta find my freaking Chitin. That's one thing annoying about you know, like collecting all these cool weapons is I gotta go find them. Where did he even go? There it is. Not obvious at all. I guess I'm just two-handing it naturally this way, but I am allowed to equip a shield. Yeah, this is going to be a pretty sick weapon for a while. Now let's get out of here and actually do the level. But th this damage is going to be just laughable. There we go, and we're back. Looking for the right place here. Drown porcelain. I got their ashes at the very least. Let's take a look. Ashes of a Drowned Porcelain, that is it. No, I deserve that, I forgot about the torch. Alrighty, now let us warp back to the, here it is, the Dome of the Forgotten. There, now we can move along. I'm not looking forward to this. Yes, yeah, see?
There we go. You gotta really do it just right. Oh, hello. Not quite there, but there's clearly something above me. Oh my god, <laughs> just one shot him. Let's take a look. Hornet Steel. An armored winged guardian of the Dome of the Forgotten. When the Inquisitor purged the Dome of Light of Sin, he brought with him several hornet steels to ensure that the newly cleansed lambs adhered to the Inquisitor's sinless standard. Ah! Tricky, tricky. Stone Mage and more files of undersights. Well, this part looks simple enough. I can see little puffs of smoke, but I don't know if it is anything. Yeah, see that? And they just drop files of undersight. Whisper Man. There's a name. Yeah, I'm gonna be a little more liberal with my file of undersight. Okay. Let's take a look at the anime. Whisper Man. Nothing? Do I need to use the file of undersight to see him? A former member of the Congregation of the Dome of Light made the first lamb by the untouched Inquisitor who saw sin on them. Silent and forgotten, they roam the halls, their place of solace now an eternal prison. And I got their ashes. Ashes of a Whisper Man, a fragment of holy memories trapped in the Dome of the Forgotten. These poor souls are now doomed for eternity to wander their place of solace as prisoners. Okay. Anyway... can't see anything now. Ah, it's fine. No, this isn't that bad. Easy. Flintlock shot and pistol. My first pistol. Oh, is it a shield weapon or a shield item? No? Where do I equip this thing? Or is it going to be up top weirdly? Huh, where would I equip this? Here? I don't even know where I would equip it. This is a nuisance. There it is. A simple lever-action pistol that utilizes a flintlock mechanism to ignite a charge of black powder, propelling forth a cluster of small projectiles. Mass-produced with quality materials by a reputable gunsmith, this weapon is designed to fire a variety of ammunition types, including elemental and poison loads, in addition to standard lead shot. Fair enough. There. Let's use some more undersight. There they are. Drowned Idol. I wonder if they look like anything in the bestiary now. That's cool. That sound. I'm liking the sword's power, gotta say. Pitch fire. Thank you very much. Ah, okay, did it. Wait for it. There we go, this is where I actually want to be. Oh, a chest. And a glorious starry sky. Scorpion equipment, that sounds badass. Heavy padded plate helm of the desert sentry, royal guard of Kokas. 
Class 4 heavy armor. I can't even wear that. Desert Sentry. Yeah, uh huh. Okay. You see that? Looks like stairs. Anyway. Okay. That's sound for this guy, though, for real. I'm liking this weapon. And is that an armor guardian? A uh, merchant set. An ornate felt cap worn by merchants is a symbol of their trade. Sporting this flashy accessory in any other setting might indicate wealth and status, but here it simply paints a brightly colored target on one's otherwise exposed head. Silk jacket, cultivating respectable image, provides a nominal advantage at the negotiating table, but offers no meaningful protection in the field of battle. Do I actually get discounts for using this? A refined, professional air. Fully functional and quite practical for keeping the hands clean, they're also regarded by some as a pretentious display of unnecessary ostentation. Popular exotic flair. It offers exceptional comfort and impeccable style, both invaluable assets to an aspiring trader. Okay. Now, can I just fight this guy? Am I better? Is my attack better? I won't be fooled this time, buddy. 96 damage. God damn. Oh, I deserve that. That is some damage. Are you- Whoa! I could get used to this. I, I mean, two of my attacks were counters. You'll notice that when I rolled and quickly attacked, I stabbed instead of swung, but... I three-shot one of these guys? Do you know what a pain these things have been this entire game? That's a problem. There. Ooh, boy. Okay. Wait for it. Okay, okay. Got your ashes, buddy. Fools. A drowned idol. Okay, that went about as well as it could have. These guys can't even get an attack off. Uh, Amber Idol, very good. Again, that, that, that transmutation stuff. You can't get enough of them. Let's heal. Let's undersight. I don't know how long it lasts, to be honest, but... Drowned Idol. Man, get wrecked. Oh, okay. That doesn't look so bad. I clung to the wall for a second. Golden Stone Ring. That sounds tempting. A topaz ring. Its band, once gold, is turned into something otherworldly. Defense against lightning. And a shrine. Yes, please. I can't level up, but I can certainly use a checkpoint. And I got a mountain warhorn. Oh, that's right, because I leveled up. I didn't really... I should have just gone for rolls. Should have realized, but it's fine. I'll wait for that to come back, but uh, I want to use Undersight one more time. I'm kind of hoping the ghost would drop more, honestly, but we'll see. Okay. Oh, that's not hard. Oh, I didn't see the knight. This guy can tank. Whew. Let's heal. And now I have the, quote, maximum amount of healing, because I have one over max. Let's see. What if I do this? Yeah, shield versus not. 
I'm assuming that's gonna friggin' hurt. Let's see what happens. Because I don't know if I'm supposed to have a sword this good right now. Here's a boss. Oh! Oh, I see something. Yikes. But we got a, we got like a sanctuary over here. The Untouched Inquisitor. Well, that untouched rank is gonna disappear real quick. You want to see a charge attack, buddy? I got one of those. This guy actually does hurt, though. Yeah, he got me, but I can easily come back. Let's just go right through all the enemies, hit up the boss, see what we can do. And he hurts, but... We'll see what I can do about that. I want to see you spam me? I don't know. You like that the Bronze Knight is on the other side of the gate trying to hit me? Yeah, look at the damage I do with that. And if I had the Jaws of Death and this guy were on my level, I could really do some, do some damage. If this is all the guy has, this might not be such a bad fight. Look at this. Ah. Uh -huh. Like, my weapon just hurts too much. Got him. With pure spam. Got him. What the hell? Is that the ghost? Anyway, that's the dome. I got the Untouched Inquisitor's Ashes. I'm gonna heal now. Unbelievable. I was afraid of that. Yep. I was afraid of that. Let's just deal with it. This guy hurts a lot. Like, what is this? My health. I can't believe this guy can mostly tank this sword. This is ridiculous. Anyway, I got his ashes. So let's take a look at a few things. Ashes of a Bronze Axe Knight, one of the mysterious Kraken guardians patrolling the island. Their origin, purpose, and allegiances remain unknown to this day, though they seem to hunt drowned and living alike. Untouched Inquisitor's Ashes. Ashes of Alasdair, the Untouched Inquisitor. Alasdair saw Sin in the Dome of Light and, through his unquestionable zeal, was able to cleanse the Dome of Sin. In a world so wicked, are not the selfless acts of holy men necessary to allow righteousness to flourish? Now let's get a load of his uh, stats here. Or not stats, but data. Well, this page is complete. Alasdair, true priest of light, voice of her voice, the untouched inquisitor. A holy man who saw sin in what was once called the Dome of Light. He saw to it that... That, oh, okay, that, that with sin, I guess those with sin, people was made sacrifice so that the untouched could flourish. The first lamb was the congregation, the second lamb was Lainea, the Queen of Smiles? I might be misremembering that. The Dome's Lady of Light and the third lamb was Kinoa, her beloved pet. So the congregation, Lainea, let me look up the Queen of Smiles real quick. Where is she? Do I have to look at her ear to get this right? This is gonna bother me. Linnea. Huh. Yeah. Anyway. Let's just get our healing items back. I can't level up, but that's alright. I'm going to have to go through the enemies again, but that's a small price to pay. It 
it's fine. It's fine. There is this altar, though. Oh, that's great. Tricky, tricky. Oh, whoops, I accidentally drank another one. Yeah, I could sure use uh, more of those. Is there a way to buy these or what? Alright, so that's where we enter the room. We have two ladders, and I cannot even investigate this altar. Oof, that was close. Can actually... Rowan Crozier can actually take a hit. An enchanter's crook fashioned in the classic style from Rowan, a dense and resilient hardwood said to be capable of warding away evil. Owing to its abundance at higher altitudes, Rowan is commonly used by mountain-dwelling ascetics for crafting these staves as part of their solitary training in the arcane arts. That sounds familiar. Also, by the way, can I just say, thank god I'm allowed to fight these ghosts without the, the vial. Because in Dark Souls, you would have to be cursed or use an item, the temporary curse, to be able to even hit these things. Here, you can hit them, you just can't see them. Whisper Lady, which is not by Whisper Man at all. A former member of the Choir of the Dome of Light made the first lamb by the untouched Inquisitor, who cleansed the Dome of Sin. Alright. Well, that was that. I did it. Let's back off. And let's quickly heal, because why not? I could keep going to the left as well. There's a lot of stuff to explore here. Is there another g -g -g ghost? A uh, crystal sphere, useful for converting. Area looks familiar. Well, it's the beginning of the dungeon, it looks like. I guess that's what that was. Anyway, let's go back. Yeah, I don't like that. Too bad I'm out of undersight. Bag of salt. That actually hurt. Fortunately, I took him out quickly. That one went down way easier. Maybe just because I wailed on him a bunch. But that wasn't so bad. Okay, that's not surprising. Do I want that? Ah! Can I get back up, though? Oh, okay, okay. Predator armor. That sounds badass. Helm of the Horned Steel. Oh. Armored winged guardians to the dome, or of the Dome of the Forgotten. The origin of the Hornet Steel is mysterious, but their similarity to spear imps may not be coincidental. Belongs to them. Belongs to them. Belongs to them. Okay. Ouch. But now I plan to actually ride the thing. So let's go back. 
No enemies to bother me this time. No g -g -g ghosts. Okay. Smooth. Also, it occurs to me, there is very little... There we go. Ah, underside, beautiful. There is very little energy consumption when I swing this weapon, which is just fantastic. Like, like I'm very pleased about that. Let's put that underside back on. Only one, which is unfortunate. But it's good to have. There we go. Uh, I'm not going to risk it. It's fine. There we go. I hear the hornet again, but you know, whatever. Oh. Which way am I going from here? I guess just up top. Why not? Wait, are you serious? Alright, let's try this on for size. Let's heal a little bit. The third lamb, the pet. Which is like a cockatrice? Or maybe a basilisk? Oh my god, it's an amalgamation. That's not a lot of damage, considering what I was trying to do. That's really not a lot of damage. Yeah, this is not a lot of damage. I don't like this. Yeah, don't get hit with a scorpion tail. Damn. Case in point. That still hit me. Alright, come on. I hate getting comboed. Oh, I'm gonna just, yeah, great. Well, because I am a complete and utter genius, I forgot to level up at the Sanctuary when I beat the previous boss, so that 27,000 salt is just gone. So, we are gonna have to do not necessarily better for the sake of the salt, but better for just the sake of anger and revenge. Let's do what we can. I guess I can't roll under this so well. I can't believe my two-handed attacks do that little to this guy. Like, this is some next level power over here. This guy's health is crazy. Blocked at the last second. You like that? I really am allowed to get away with a lot more attacking than I'm used to, though. Oops. Aim the wrong way. I still need to learn how to dodge that one, though. Maybe just go away. You can really lay into this guy. Look at this. Look at this damage. Freaking gorgeous. Whoa. This damage is something else. This sword is great. Well, I just missed with my swag attack. Let's heal. I almost died. Let's just back away for a second. Get that health back. I really don't want to die the last second, but it's all the same to you. I 
Now's my big chance. Yeah, it's over. Take this. I am very irritated about that salt loss. The salt I gained from killing the boss was less than the salt I lost before I fought him. To be fair, though, that was from another boss. The Sacrifice. The Third Lamb's Beak. You're damn right. I, I keep thinking I'm using my basic greatsword, which costs a ton of stamina, and this one just doesn't. The Third Lamb's Beak. Beak of the Third Lamb, Old Guard of the Dome of the Forgotten. A hippogriff, that's what that is, who once patrolled the skies, protecting pilgrims of the dome from raiders and bandits. She was made to sacrifice her will in service of the Inquisitor. There it is, the third lamb. A shadow of her former glory, the third lamb is the bound and broken thrall of the untouched Inquisitor. There was a time when this hippogriff had pride, the praise of her master, and a name. But the Inquisitor saw sin in these things, and saw to it that they became sacrifices. Like the lamb itself. Damn, that's messed up. Well, next thing I'm going to want to do is hit up a sanctuary to end the installments, but we have to get to one first. I suppose it's not hard to get to the one that I came from. Oh, hello. This air, it's so still. I was drawn to this dome for reasons I don't understand. It's so lonely here. I long for a friend, but I think I've driven everyone I loved away. Tell me, have you heard of Hardlight? No. Well, then let me tell you. Hardlight has been described as not unlike crystallized moonbeams. It can be only, or it can only be, seen and touched by those that possess a Hardlight brand. But even those unable to touch Hardlight will see its traces. Oh, is that the blue mist we've seen? You'd like that brand, wouldn't you? Yeah. Yes, as I thought. Well, it's as simple as that. Accept this brand. Got it. You come here to think too, don't you? I enjoy solitude, of course, but you're always welcome to join me. I like to think about how meaningful my actions are. Making real change? That's what I bring to this world. Brand. A word of power carried in a brand. Bearing the brand grants its owner power over matter. Wear this brand to imbue your torch with the light, allowing you to render blue arcane matter tangible. Got it. Yeah, nothing else. Okay. Yeah, look to the left. You can see it through the, uh, the fire. And now they become real. Oh, this is the place we've already been to. Well, look at that. A shortcut back, I suppose. Now, remember, I think we saw one other set of hard light platforms. We'll have to get there. First, where am I in relation to everything else? Oh, well, there's this. It's freaking ghosts. I'll take that undersight, though. Let me remind myself where that sanctuary was. Did I even want to go that way? Nope. Hornet steals ashes, how about that? Ashes of a hornet steel, one of the Inquisitor's many enforcers of his sinless standards. They motivated allegiance to their master's word with the tips of their arrows. Also, it occurs to me that I should not be alive, and yet am. You see my health? It was crazy. Right, I didn't need to be here. I did want to go up. Oh, that's right. This was... Yeah, I wanted to go back the other way. I forgot. I went to the left in the first place to get a chest or something. Oh yeah, the chest that I just had already opened. I'm a genius, you see. Good. Where was that sanctuary? Nope. Oh god, alright.
that is freaking crazy. Like, I really can't believe that. Right, this is the way back to the sanctuary. But look at this. I think I might actually tackle that before any of the installments. Uh, what's the easiest way down? Yeah, this way. Definitely want to hit the sanctuary because my healing is nil and my wounding reduces my maximum health by quite a bit. And I want to spend my freaking salt this time. Only twice, though. Tree of skill. Can I pump that shield? No, because I only have three black pearls. Alright, but still, the salt is spent, so I feel a little bit safer. Alright, now let's go back to that initial boss. Oh, wait, no, I want to drop, don't I? I don't like that clumsy roll. I'm like what they call fat rolling in Dark Souls. It's not as painful as the Dark Souls version, but uh, I'm, I'm aware of it. Alright, goodbye. Whoa. She's just like those pale witches. Kraken Great Shield, Stained Page, it just drops it. Okay, great. A massive gilded shield, chiefly composed of what appears to be bronze alloy. Formerly wielded with an unsettling deftness by bronze knight, this shield bears neither arms nor ensigns, but instead merely a blank mirror-polished face that coldly reflects its victim's last desperate moments of life. Jeez. And I also got a stained page, which is pretty fantastic, actually. Stained pages exist for me to be a dick, but uh, we'll be getting to that later. That's a very specific use. This is so irritating. I can never seem to jump quite right for these platforms. Oh, it's a miracle I wasn't hit by that. I like that I can see her despite being invisible, despite her being invisible, because she's got the salt outline. That's kind of funny. Anyway, so this is where I want to be. There. Now I guess I keep going. Charge ring. A metal ring set with a rich blue crystal. The crystal softly hums as if charged by the celestial fabric of fire and sky. Increases magic. Very nice. Now, let us... Warp to... The Castle of Storms. Yeah, unfortunately I changed my creed, so I just lost whatever swag I had, like I can't buy any more of these great swords. Not that I really have occasion to, that doesn't matter much, but still. At least I can buy for the merchant, that's something. But yeah, I no longer have seven rolls, I'm down to six. It's all about that leveling up because I lost my rank. It is what it is. But for now it is time to stop the installment. Well, we certainly made a lot of progress today, didn't we? We tackled the Dome of Light, we took out not one but two bosses, and we got another brand. This thing certainly wasn't easy, but our incredibly overpowered sword definitely helped. Until next time, everyone.